Hey guys, how you doing? Hope you're well as Celestia. Speaking to you today from the beautiful town of Lauterbrunnen in Switzerland. Uh, just look at this amazing view behind me, guys. Uh, just an astonishingly beautiful uh, place to be here. Uh, by the way, guys, in this video, I want to tell you about one of the worst mistakes I've made in my life. Now, this was a long time ago. I would say about 20, almost 20 years ago now. But it's still a worthwhile lesson to uh, learn from. So in this video, I want to share with you the important lesson of how I lost $50,000 or 30,000 pounds, essentially, back in the late 1990s. Now, if you are old enough to remember the late 1990s, uh, which I think you might be, you may recall back in the late 90s, we had our own version of the Bitcoin bubble, except it wasn't Bitcoin back then, it was the dot-com stocks. So in the late 90s, um, the internet dot-com age had come to life and everybody essentially was crazy about dot-coms or technology stocks. Not just any technology stocks, but internet stocks. All right, guys, so essentially what happened in the late 90s was an amazingly massive bubble took place in dot-com stocks, all right? So practically any company, by the way, guys, any company, no matter how garbage or how rubbish they were, could just say, hey, we have our own stock now. And just like a bunch of toilet paper, they would issue out these stocks, worthless stocks, by the way. Some, some of them were worthless. Some of them were quality companies. I'm not saying they're all worthless. So there were many companies that genuinely were worth something, like Amazon, Microsoft, of course, and uh, Apple. But yes, guys, there were a lot of companies that were total garbage, total nonsense, and pretty much they were just handing out their stocks to people. Again, bunch of toilet paper, most of them. So guys, back in the late 1990s, hysteria and craze had taken over the world on dot-com stocks because essentially the dot-com and technology uh, indexes like the NASDAQ were skyrocketing higher. As you can see from this chart, the NASDAQ was just going massively, massively higher. Uh, and so were many hundreds of internet tech stocks. Now, back in the late 1990s, I inherited some money. I inherited about 30,000 pounds or about $50,000. And I decided to invest this money, guess what, into internet stocks. Now, I should tell you back then, I was probably in my early 20s. I was very naive, I had no clue what I was doing. In fact, I had never heard of charts or chart analysis. Again, back in the day, technology was not so far advanced where you could just pull up a chart of a stock or the markets. It wasn't like that back then in the late 1990s or early 2000s. So back in the late 1990s, again, when I was very young, had no clue what I was doing, I decided to essentially invest uh, this money, this $50,000 into these technology stocks. In fact, I decided to invest my money in one particular tech stock, which is not really worth mentioning here, but bottom line is, guys, that this tech stock um, eventually collapsed, went significantly lower. As you can see, guys, back in the late 1990s, in the early 2000s, the tech stock bubble, or the dot-com bubble, essentially burst. And just like what happened to Bitcoin, I mean, if you just take a look at the chart of Bitcoin, the Bitcoin crash that occurred in 2017, 2018, it could look identical to what happened to the dot-com crash. And of course, when the dot-com bubble burst, just like the Bitcoin bubble, when that burst in 2017, um, essentially dot-com stocks, pretty much all of them, majority of them crashed. And so did the stock that I purchased and put my money in. And essentially what happened was, as you can see here, when the NASDAQ here crashed, uh, in the late 1990s and in the beginning of 2000s, the um, majority of tech stocks became absolutely worthless. I mean, these tech stocks, these dot-com stocks, again, remember guys, the majority of them were just garbage or were just worthless. And eventually they dropped by 50 to 80 to 90%. And unfortunately, I kept my money in this particular uh, tech stock company until it became completely worthless. Um, so that was by far one of the worst mistakes I've ever made in my life. And it's the story of how I lost $50,000 in probably, probably about a year or less than a year, I think it was. And the question is, if I had done that today, would I have done things differently? Absolutely. I mean, let me just give you a few things I would have done differently today if I'd made the same mistake that I did 20 years ago, back in the late 1990s. Uh, firstly, I would definitely have had a stop loss, even if not a physical stop loss, but a mental one. For example, I would have said to myself, look, if the stock drops by about 10%, I'm out, or 15%, a 15% stop loss. If the price drops from the highs by 15%, that's it, I'm out of here. Uh, in other words, I'm gonna exit my position and cut my losses short. Another one would have been putting a 21 weekly average. So 21 average on a weekly chart or a monthly chart. Either one would have been fine. But essentially the bottom line is that, you know, when the price breaks below the 21 weekly average, that's it, we can get out. Even better than a weekly average would be a velocity. So one of my favorite indicators is what's called LT velocity, which actually I prefer to a moving average because velocity takes into account uh, standard deviation, momentum, volatility, and very important things. And I would have said, look, if the price closes below the last velocity position, I'm out, you know, I'm, I'm closing my position, I'm getting out. I would use that on a monthly chart and a weekly chart. So there are several exit strategies that I could have employed uh, if I knew about them back then. Of course, I didn't know about them back then. Again, this is a lesson of risk that I think everybody learns. And listen, guys, if you've lost money in Bitcoin or cryptocurrencies in the last few years, 
you know, don't be hard on yourself because look, I've made similar mistakes again 20 years ago. Almost anyone, any professional trader or investor has made the same mistakes you probably have. So again, um, I'm telling you this story because I want you to let you know I'm not perfect. I've made plenty of bad mistakes and so have some of the great traders. If you read the book Market Wizards, almost every single great trader in that book has made some bad, terrible mistakes. Another important mistake is not to bottom fish. In other words, not to fish for a bottom in a market. You know, instead, uh, you know, it's, a lot of people do this. When something is in a downtrend, they're trying to pick a bottom. Instead, wait for bottom reversal signals. You know, for example, bottoming, bottoming reversal patterns like double bottoms, head and shoulder patterns or uh, you know, cup and handle, whatever you like, or maybe uh, a breakthrough resistance, an uptrend, like a higher low, anything, or divergence. Divergence is a very important signal. So these are things that we're looking for now instead of just trying to pick any bottom. One important thing I should mention is that the psychology of many people, including myself, back in the late 1990s is one of the reasons why I made the mistake of jumping into this uh, bubble, uh, the dot-com bubble, is because many of my friends back then, many of my friends, people I knew, uh, were buying dot-com stocks and they were making, you know, uh, hundreds if not thousands or millions uh, of dollars and essentially I felt I was missing out. You know, the FOMO back in the late 90s, the FOMO of, uh, you know, not being in this craze, not being in this bubble, essentially was one of the main reasons why so many people jumped in at the late, uh, the late stages, including again myself. And it's probably one of the biggest mistakes I made. So be careful of your own psychology, the feelings of FOMO, emotional state. All right, guys, hope this video helps. If it has, please give it a thumbs up and I look forward to seeing you guys in the next video. Bye for now.